Joining me today is Alan Blood, Chairman of the Australian Energy Company Limited. He'll be speaking at IIR's Coltec Conference, which takes place on the 26th to 27th of September in Canberra. Hello, Alan. Thanks for joining me today. Good morning. How are you? First of all, in a world demanding clean energy, how can coal compete? Look, on a few fronts. Firstly, coal is often only uh, regarded as a polluting product because of how it's used. If it's used in other ways, which historically have not been traditional, but which in the future will become commonplace, then the emissions footprint will greatly reduce. And also, coal can also provide its own offsets by way of being a base product for the reabsorption of atmospheric carbon dioxide uh, into the soil, which of course is, is the globe's largest sequestering medium. Can you provide me with a bit of an update on current clean coal technology advances and project updates specifically in Australia? The main areas of uh, so-called clean coal updates are the removal of certain of the elements that cause primarily atmospheric pollution. For example, moisture removal from coal is primarily the main issue here, particularly with the brown coals, but also with black coals. There is a strong correlation, technically very proven, uh, between the moisture content in coals and, and CO2 produced. And so moisture reduction is an ever-advancing area of technology, which is no longer research. It's, it's operating technology in certain places in the world and, um, uh, and will become uh, more so uh, in Australia. The issue is, is not technical. Um, it really is the, the quantum of sunk capital that exists in the existing power stations and you simply can't knock them over and start again. It's just not economic to do so. And what policy and regulation developments have accelerated clean coal project implementations in Australia and what still needs to be implemented, do you think, in, uh, in your view? I don't think any policy implementation has helped in any way, shape or form. In fact, the current nonsense going on is only going to hinder it in terms of carbon tax because industry itself has been cleaning up its act and government have provided certain incentives in terms of uh, technology uh, incentives uh, and grants and so on. But all of that is, is very much work in motion, work in progress, and the threat of carbon taxes when there is no immediate technology outcome. I'm referring now to the existing power station uses of coal, not futuristic ones such as where coal is dried. It's just going to make life more difficult because it's going to remove the amount of net cash flow available for R&D and other activities. What do you think the outlook for clean coal success is in Australia? I think it's very good. Coal is the most common of the energy sources on the planet in terms of um, the fossil fuels, uh, which includes natural gas, of course. And it has a range of applications uh, which extend from fertiliser through to transport fuels and all things in the middle, such as the current main usage of, of power station generation. So I think with the work that has gone on and will continue to go on, uh, its future is going to be very meaningful in the world economy, it's not just Australia's economy. Alan, you're speaking at IR's Coltec conference, which takes place on the 26th to 27th of September 2011 in Canberra. What will be the focus of your presentation? It will be talking on the spectrum of areas of, of coal, but will primarily focus on the one that I see as the greatest application and the most topical, and that is the ability of coal in a certain treated format to act as a catalyst for plant root stem and growth development such an extent that the increased size of the root and stem growth will absorb huge quantums of atmospheric CO2 and has the capacity and the potential to totally absorb all of Australia's annual emissions. And this could be done in a way which does not require industry to be taxed, but industry, particularly the rural sector, will actually make a lot of money out of it. And that will be the focus. Alan Blood, many thanks for your time today. We're looking forward to your presentation in Canberra in September. Thank you very much.